All right, I see the record button. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Um, Chris and I have become quick and fast friends during COVID. He has been one of the silver linings for me. Uh, sharing stories in our backyard in the socially distant fashion that we've all kind of come so used to. Um, through some of those stories and laughing about different things that happened in Lafayette and how things have changed, uh, we realize it's a little bit of oral history. And so what we're going to share with you tonight, um, I'm going to serve, Chris and I have been joking a little bit as we got ready for this. Um, I'm going to serve as the, uh, the host of tonight's show for the next half hour or so. And Chris is going to walk us through uh, some great photographs that we pulled together and just some very brief anecdotal stories on each of those. Um, hopefully they spark a little bit of uh, I remember that or for those of you who haven't lived in Lafayette uh, for decades as uh, as we both have, um, it may be maybe some new information on what Lafayette used to look like back in the 50s, 60s and 70s. Um, so to start off, um, to kind of lead it out of the gates with our local Lafayette legend, um, the photograph that you're looking at is an aerial photo and our pointer um, with PowerPoint is not the most effective. So bear with us. If you see the main road that moves along the right hand side from top to bottom, that is Pleasant Hill Road. And then if you see in the bottom right corner, there's a road that branches off that is Spring Hill Road. And I grew up, as Father John mentioned, right at the top of Martino Road. Uh, Mr. Martino actually lived on our street when I was a young boy in the 70s and moved there uh, and has obviously since passed away. Uh, Chris's home now is out in Lee's Valley, which is that next main vein that heads from the right side of the photo to the left. Um, Chris, why don't you maybe kick us off by sharing your initial observation <laughs> of what Lafayette looked like when you this know, photo was taken. The reason I put this one in, I was just fascinated by how many orchards were in Lafayette. And uh, it was just amazing to me um, after, you know, going through Barry's photos uh, and the phenomenal job she did. And I came across this one. And the story behind this one was uh, Marchant, who was a big builder in Lafayette. He actually went up in an airplane to pick out lots off of Spring Hill Road, uh, Black Hawk out that way, Black Hawk Road. Love it. And so he looked and said, look, he found a spot there. You notice that big white line? Right there, Ash on the left. Okay. So he, he found a spot where there were no orchards. And that was Perfect. that was the builder's game back then. There's, you know, all those builders, Brizoni, Marchand, Smith, they came to Lafayette and really put it in a new renaissance as suburbia USA took off. And so I thought it was a great way to start. And Mr. Rossi, who I lived next door to for years up in Wheatley's Valley, he owned all those orchards. Wow. And so he said it was walnuts and a wide variety of uh uh, fruits and vegetables, and then down towards Akalani's, uh, which I included in there, he said uh, that was a... So, so this is Akalani's being built... 1919. 19, they started in 35, and they finished in 40. I think Mary okay. had this slide as well. Okay. But he said Akalani's was a huge tomato field, <laughs> the largest tomato field in eastern Costa Costa. And wow. so that whole thing was tomatoes. And so I thought that was a great way to start um, so that was a Roosevelt WPA project. And then the Renaissance came with, you know, Pat Brown, who really led the education charge in the Grove, California. Um, and I included, you know, Akalani's, kind of the Akalani's you and I went to on the next slide. Yeah. yeah and I was going to say, it doesn't look that different, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, what's interesting is, you know, they, that was in Life magazine at the time. Really? Yeah. That design, that open corridor design that was is very unique. Deal. Yeah, yeah. I think Mary talked about that. That was a big deal. But you notice that it became the design of all schools in Lafayette. <laughs> Everything was outdoor, open corridor, in the valley. And uh, uh, that design took off across uh, the, you know, the eastern counties, country across the county. Love it. Love it. So, yeah, Aquilon, you know. The other thing I included in there was one of Mary's pictures of the train. The train was still running then when, when, when Aqualines was finished. Um, you know, it's how you got to the city, right? Because uh, the lower deck of the Bay Bridge was trains. As Father John said when he saw that slide, wouldn't we love to have those electric trains back? Oh my gosh. Just yeah. a shuttle back and forth. Um, and it became the basis for us as children 
because the railroad tracks were kind of a key way we got around uh, the Bay, you know, the Lafayette, Walnut Creek, Moraga area. Just not cutting through anybody's property. And we got, <laughs> yeah. A you know what? Space. We did that too. Right. There were no fences back then, as you know. All right. No fences back Good. then. Good. Good. And and r roughly, what do you think this photo is from? Just if you're, you know, I would say that's that Mary knows better than I. I think it's like a 1945 kind of thing, 1950 kind of thing. So before young Chris Stark came into the world, absolutely. All right, absolutely. All right. I came in a few years after that, in 1958. <laughs> Let's see what we got next year. This was the other photo of Aquinas, as you, okay. as you know and love it. Right? Sure, sure. Yeah, that's where you got your higher education, right? <laughs> right at. I'm, I'm sure that there are some Aquilani's grads out here. So Chris and I both went to Aquilani's. Um, I can say it didn't change much between whenever this photo was taken and the early 80s. Uh, and now I have two kids. Uh, my Both my children are students at Aquilani's. So wow. Is there, there any are, different? There's a few adjustments. but Is there any hot water in the old gym? I, no? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that was an issue for us. There was It was so old and antiquated. Uh, when we when I came through there in the 70s, but you know what, it worked fine, and I think they've done a good job rehabbing it as well. And uh, you can see Pleasant Hill Road there is just kind of a one lane each way kind of thing. Yeah, I, I want to get to that other slide you shared with me. I love the Pleasant. hills in the background. Not a single home on those hills. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned a story about the hills. Let's hear it. Well, Angelo was telling me my old neighbor, Angelo Rossi. He also his brother had a furniture store in downtown Lafayette. He was saying, hey, when developers came in, I basically offered them the hills for three, for free. And being a farmer, he thought the valley and the valley soil was where, hey, but for the valley, I, you need a premium dollar, right? That's crazy. He, now you think, hold it, he had it backwards. The well, hills were valuable back then, right? And you told me he sold it. He for sold, a yeah, he said he gave away the hills for a buck an acre. But the other stuff was much more expensive. Wow. Because they were fertile soil. And there was a creek running through there, as you know, over by Buckeye Ranch, sure. Spring Hill School, um, and uh, as well as behind Aquilani's. Remember That's that creek crazy. back there? Mm -mm. No, I don't remember. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Spring Brook Pools there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. that irrigated all these farms and all these uh, mm -hmm. orchards. It's amazing the creek system that Lafayette has. It's probably buried underground now, but we'll go through it. All right, all right, let's keep moving. This is gonna be a tough one on the next one. I mean, it's a general slide. Um, yeah, what do, tell us what we're looking at. That's here. Highway 24, of course, right? right? But, yeah. the, the big Eisenhower era freeway connections throughout the blossoming of suburbia USA, fastest way into the city, um, and the demise of trains, right? And, and uh, public transit. And am I looking at Lafayette, or excuse me, 24, I'm looking to the east, so that's yeah. Diablo up on the right. Yeah, that's okay. Diablo up on the right. You know, another thing that amazed me about this photo was, where is Walnut Creek? It's not even there. Yeah, It hadn't even been born yet, really. It was still just a small branch town out in the East Bay, you know, probably like we look at, you know, Oakley area and out that way, right? Sure, still sure. ranch hands. Um, but uh, Lafayette was right in the start of emerging growth. In, in, when this picture was taken, the Lafayette population was 6,000 people. Okay. 6,000 wow. people. Yeah. Wow. And so what Lafayette was now? 25,000? So between uh, when this picture was taken and 19, I guess it was 1965 or 68, it went from 6,000 to 22,000. God. That's how fast in those yeah. 10 years it grew. And, and you know, uh, it was one of those things that that's why my parents came here, right? They were coming from Cleveland, Ohio, and they said, hey, let's go to the most expensive place that's close to the city that I can commute in, okay. like everybody does, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they bought a house on Hawthorne Drive for 18000 right? Right. <laughs> Wow. Wouldn't you love those prices? A <laughs> dollar an acre and 18000 for a house. I think I might be actually be able to afford that. So there's Highway. rush hour. There's rush hour on Highway 24, right? Wow, 1960. All right. That looks pretty good. Yeah, that's a different time for sure. That looks, that's a great shot, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it. Um, they were proud of that. 
Look at that. I mean, just, <laughs> and it was a dream. I got to say, even when I was started driving, it was a dream come true. There was not a car on the road. Okay, so you, you can make it to Sacramento in, you know, half hour, 45 minutes. Right? So I remember when you and I um, first started spending time together in the backyard during COVID, doing our socially distant, uh, trying to ma maintain sanity. And you said to me, yeah, the roads right now are like back when I was a kid driving around <laughs> yeah. because everything was shut down. You're absolutely right. The pandemic really gave me flashbacks to the old days. But you know what? I mean, it was it was a classic case of, you know, one car in the garage, um, you know, and every house had a black and white TV. But you only got one or two channels. There was no cable yet. Sure. Uh, there was nothing. And so, you know, I, I thought, okay, 1960, what goes with 1960? I would say this guy goes with 1960. Back yeah, there he is. And every and every so, night. Yeah. Yep. Every night. That was the only channel we got, though. That was Channel 5, uh, KPIX. But you know what? It was great. It was great newscaster. He brought us all the current events. Um, but again, Lafayette was booming, and those builders were going to town. And... Uh, uh, so, yeah, tell us what we're looking at here. Obviously, a range home. Somewhere. Yeah, a classic Brazoni or Michant, uh, you know, Smith, classic rancher that you see today. I mean, they all have good bones. You live in one. You know, we all do. Um, that didn't go, that bought a home that was, has been here a while. Mm -hmm. um, I know mine was built uh, back to that original slide when he built uh, Blackhawk. Mine's a Marchant. Um, and he built Blackhawk and that road up by you. That was a 58 to Boa, okay. just like I was in Release Valley. Um, you know, they were just great homes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, again, they were they were using redwood siding from Mendocino, of course, right? right. I mean, they had the ingredients in, in the, you know, the construction there, and they were great builders. I mean, you got to hand it to some of these builders, and they were building homes as fast as they could, as fast as they could. Ash, I got to call out one thing that you love. See that pile of wood out in the street? Okay. That was a gold mine for kids. Let's face it. I mean, come on. There's grass. Some three boards. Oh, three boards. Every fort came out. In fact, if Mrs. Brazoni is on, I have to put, apologize now. And I really want to probably give her five bucks or so because we took at least five or six dollars worth of wood well, from each of her homes. There's the, no doubt about it. The price of lumber has gone up 100% since the <laughs> pandemic started. So it, it might be more than five bucks. But they built every fort and every coaster in Lafayette. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Oh, that's crazy. I remember our, so um, we live on Monroe Avenue now, um, right in downtown Lafayette. And the neighborhood was developed pretty much when the Caldecott Tunnel went in. So 40s, late 30s and 40s. And um, my wife, Kelly, and I had just bought our first home. And, you know, that sort of pit in your stomach feeling when you have your first home, when you have a mortgage and, and life just feels very real. And we had someone come out to inspect the underneath of the home, the foundation and, and the crawl space. And the guy came out and he said, uh, well, you know, you have an old house, but the underneath is looks like it was put together yesterday. The, the yeah. redwood that's underneath there. They, you can't get that anymore. That old growth redwood that, for better or for worse, was was torn down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. All right, let's keep moving through. Oh wow, a new yeah. shopping center. All right, yeah. tell us about this. Well, I mean, I think everybody knows Mr. Brazoni was a visionary, right? And what a great idea um, he came up with. It was next to the Safeway at the time. I remember him spending weeks and weeks and weeks just hauling dirt away for this new so this is where center. whole foods Noah's bagels sick ways the colors yeah. everything right that whole development was done i can't read the upper corner but i think it was uh 65 or let's see 63 okay that's in the lafayette sun which i delivered as a paper boy okay yeah paper yeah, boy that's a bit of trivia but uh but uh look at that seven acre plaza center 20 story stores um artist rendering i'm not sure when he finished if joan was on she would know but you know let's uh but that still exists today talk about good yeah. great construction how many of those have you seen bulldozed sure. in the last 10 years right sure. that one is still in great shape test of time and uh was a monument a big move in lafayette's retail uh establishment and, and uh, market there's no doubt about it um all those stores uh, that went in there because prior, there wasn't much to it. And speaking yeah, so, of, so what was in Lafayette before this big shopping center? 
Okay, then. Uh, you know what? There was a Safeway next door, and you can't see it. It's that little picture down to the right. But there's Safeway up in the right hand corner. Yeah. Um, and then there was La Fiesta Foods in La Fiesta Square. And that's a slide I know we have coming. We'll get yeah. To that one, yeah. And there was uh, up the street at, and of course, Diablo Foods was coming in. Okay. Yep. Yep. Another and, institution. And, sure. And Trader Joe's, there was, it was called Lewis Foods and then it changed to Monty Foods in the 60s or mm -hmm. something like that. So there were a few other grocery stores. They were very small. Okay. They were very small. Safeway was by far the largest. And then when Lucky's and Cracker Barrel, Barrel Delicatessen moved into Mr. Brizzoni's Plaza, uh, they were by far the most modern and newest stores. And that's actually what caused Safeway to plow theirs under. They bolted totally keep up. Yep, got to it. keep up. Good. All right. So speaking of the sun, there's a, there's a, uh, a oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I saw this. I had to put it in there. The Lafayette Sun personal ad, right? Go ahead and read it. All right, I'm going to read. Uh, no, you read. Which one do you want to read? The any girl or the young unattached woman? I'm going to read about the swap shop. So <laughs> oh, have, come on. We're trading a 1937 Plymouth uh, business coupe, I think it says, for a boat uh, with an outboard motor, Lafayette Pharmacy, and it gives a street address. It gives you a number to connect. Um, you delivered this paper. Is this a daily paper? Is this a <laughs> weekly paper? What is it? It was, it was kind of a daily daily newspaper back then yeah right. it was great no inserts lightweight uh, so on you know it's easy to carry and and how'd you get around are you on your bike are you on a horse i mean what's happening <laughs> you know what i think i had just gotten my uh what were those called those stingrays were those the no. stingrays what's stingray yeah stingray i think they'll know like a scooter people online will like, you know, know the stingray right. it was made by schwinn the, it was, oh, the bikes yeah. made by schwinn out of chicago or the big bikes but I kind of love, you know, like the one young, unattached woman, intelligent, healthy, attractive, must have husband by March 15th when her lease is up. I think that's, that is genius. That, that is genius. Certainly a different time for sure. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the pricing. Right. Let's see. Oh, boy. So this is La Fiesta Foods. La Fiesta, La Fiesta, Fiesta Square is now. It, yeah, it was in uh, what we call the FedEx office right now, the FedEx uh, okay. section of the... don't know what happened. It appears that we lost our presenter. Well, yeah, so we lost it. We're back now on cellular. Oh, OK. So we, we are, I guess, Comcast just shut down our internet. So we're oh. going to now try and go back to screen sharing. Hopefully you're all, we didn't lose all of our guests, I hope. No. So who is it that I need to make um, co-host? So you can keep it as Chris Stark and let me see. Let me think of the best way to do this. We may have to jump on our old slides. I don't see Why? Chris Stark as a participant. Oh. Bear with me one okay. moment. Well, that's a lot better. Pretty 
positions. They somehow got off, but we're working on it. We're fixing it. Okay. Yeah. You know, they were in a different setting. That's why I couldn't find yeah. him. And that's what that we lost. <laughs> oh. Um, I see Pam Stark. Is that no try no, we're gonna, eggs? We're gonna um we're gonna reconnect to screen share um through Chris's phone. We'll use cellular if you don't mind bearing with us just a minute. Oh, okay. But I think I'll still need to make you co-hosts. Yes, you will. Well, is it gonna be are you joining just as yourself? Is that your phone number? What is it gonna be? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Let's find out. Yeah. I hope this doesn't impact our payment plan that we arranged. <laughs> <laughs> While we're waiting for them to connect, um, I'd just like to interject. Um, my family moved to Lafayette in 1957 from um, San Francisco. And, um, that woman right there. I've, we've had the family home. Up until this point in 1990, we moved in with my family. And so I've had a long, long life in Lafayette. And it's it's been fascinating to see this presentation. It brings up a lot of memories for me. Yeah. You're very kind. All right, got it. Not yet. Oh, great. We're almost there. Perfect. Technology is so wonderful when it works. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can rejoin them. Heard that. All right. We back in? Not yet. Well, we're in, but I need to screen share. Okay. Will you join, um, go to your email and join that link? You're now on my phone, so it should work. And oh, sure. I'll, and then I'll screen share. So who do I need to make co-host so you can share your screen? It should come back as Chris Stark. I don't, oh, I see Pam Stark. Hang on, it's about to join. Oh, okay. And I think should be in and I'll mute us. Oh, there we go. Perfect. All right. So let me. Okay. You're the co-host, but you need to unmute yourself. Are you able to hear me okay now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah we're using two, we're using oh, okay. two computer yeah, okay. just to, to do it efficiently. So as long as you can hear us, we'll screen yeah. share. And we okay. Might be back in business. Okay. There we go. Hold on. Let's see if that catches up. All right. Pardon the interruption. We're back. Yeah, I think the internet's <laughs> going down all over Lafayette, right? All right. And Rita, are you able to hear us okay and see a current slide? Of yes, we can. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 So we're in. Uh, so know, where are we now? Keep down your cost of living. Keep down where, your cost where of living. Is you know what? It was just a sign of the times. I mean, you're dealing with a generation fresh off World War II, right? So it was the uh, the origination of loyalty groups, right? Okay. Sure. I mean, I I don't think people realize. Okay, I'm in the Pete's Club. I'm in you know this club, that club. Right. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was started years ago with green stamps and blue cheese stamps and so on. And these merchants, right? I mean, I licked, I must have licked at least 5,000 books of blue chip stamps as a kid. Uh, and it all depend on, depended, you know, 
I'm sure many of the people listening all did the same, whether it's blue chip or, or s &H green stamps, as I recall, there was loyalty to be had. And these merchants uh, would do that. And so you would trade in your books of stamps for credit. Um, and it went on in all the merchants of Lafayette. I was going to say, I see Campana Music in here. That's one I know. <laughs> yeah. They, that, that's an, a long standing and old business. Yeah, yeah, that's what I love about this uh, picture of the paper, too. Those are the old pictures of the shops. You'll see, you know, Lafayette Market in there on the left. Um, you know, you'll you'll see the Sutton Shoes, I remember. Remember yeah, Sutton Shoes? I do. Yeah, I do. That was around. That yeah. was in my, my, my era. Yeah. Cool. And that's, you know, I put that in there, too, because that was before the big fire of, I don't know what year, I think if Mary's on, you have to ask her. But anyway, La Fiesta Square uh, and La Fiesta Foods and Sutton Shoes, there was a fire there. It burned down that whole section of La Fiesta Square. And so when you see Federal Express and the bike store right. and Manja and all that, that was that's all new. And that's why it doesn't exactly match the original La Fiesta Square. Got it. That burned down. All that meant was I got to go down and pick out a chart pair of free shoes. Well, <laughs> they, they were they were free, so it's all good. All right, let's keep moving through. We have some more to get through yeah. here. So well, I thought I'd do some, you know, some current pictures everybody recognizes, and some flashback of what I remember it as. All right, so this is Campana Music today. I remember that. Yep, right. right. I know that from today. Do you remember what was there before? Well, only because I cheated and I did this with you once or twice. Before. Oh, okay. I'm sure they remember what was there before. It'll take just a second here. Oh, there we go. It was the Greyhound bus station. Wow. So the tracks came up, the buses came in, right? Okay. That was the advent of, you know, the 50s and 60s, right? Okay. Freeways and buses were our new mode of transportation. And so you could go down to the bus depot. And for a dime, you could go to Oakland. For a quarter, you could go to the city. And they turned the Bay Bridge, the lower deck, was for buses and trucks, and the upper deck was for car drivers. Got okay? it. Okay. Wow. So you're so two lanes each way, right? Yep. Now it's yep. all one way or the other. Right. Yeah. Right. So you'd go down to the Greyhound bus station, get on a bus. You could go to Walnut Creek. You could go to Oakland. You could go wherever you wanted, and that was the uh, transportation. Love it. Love it. That's crazy to think. And now who knows what campaign of music that building will be next. It's for sale. So yeah, the yeah. next chapter is uh, to right. be written. You're right. All right. Uh, so this is a, a this scene. This is the current picture. Yeah. This is what you, you'll recognize. Let's wait one minute until it catches up here on the screen. There we go. You recognize that one. Of course. Everyone recognizes that one. And then let's see. All right. Jack Hagman, tell us about, okay, so I know to the right here, I see Toyland, uh, 70s, that was 70s and maybe early 80s, that was Handlebar Toys. Right, and, and so in the where I got 50s to go. and 60s, yeah. 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 And, and it, would, it wasn't any different for you at that. Same wooden floors. Oh, I'm sure nothing changed, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, somebody said it was an old horse stable. I don't know if that's true or not, but didn't it look like it inside? Wow. I mean, it was interesting. Toyland, we would go there, we loved it. Right, you take our our uh, paper route money and go down there and buy it. But if you, it's too bad we can't zoom in. But in between Toyland and Jack Hagman is the original Millie's, and I think that means something to everybody. Okay, so when I'm seeing coffee shop here, that's uh, Millie's. That was the original Millie's. Original really? Millie's was right. So there. when did Millie's move? Because I only know Millie's <laughs> in its current, you know, loving home. I'm too old to remember. All so right, okay, okay. All right, all right. But that was it. You know, it was just a tiny dime. You know. You've probably been in that Italian restaurant, right? I have. It's been yeah. it's yeah. cycled through several things. It okay. it was a postage stamp of a place, but <laughs> Millie's became an icon in Latvia. That's great. And they still have good coffee cakes. So yeah, they deserve that status. All right, so let's let this. So the the, uh, the other shot I thought I'd take here. on was a shot of the intersection of Mount Diablo and Moraga right. Road, right? And. Uh, uh, that's what it looks like today. Everybody recognizes that, of course. But when I was a kid, it was used for parades, mm -hmm. right? And we all, everybody laughed. Lafayette's a one stop stoplight town. That was the only place there was a stoplight in Lafayette. So Mount Diablo and, and Moraga Road. Right. Okay. Now there's 10 plus. But I think, you know, I'm looking at this now as, as you have it up there. I think that was the battle of the flags. So the two junior highs used to go to 
compete in sports against each right. other, right? And there was Fairview and there was Stanley, right? Stanley was the old. Right, I went to Stanley. Yep. Yeah. Where was the old Fairview? icon? Fairview is now, I think, called Bur Burton Valley Elementary. Oh, out there. Right. Okay. Off Aurora sure. Drives for sure. Yeah. yeah. But it was a big deal, believe it or not. It was, so there was the Battle of the Flags for football and there was Cage Carnival for basketball. Okay. So, you know what? See, that's the only reason I think is because if you look at the cheerleaders, they have the big F, and it must have been Fairview. Wow. And, you know, one of our parishioners, Marie's eyes are right there. I'll bet you that's Marie right there marching down the Rada Road on her way to Stanley School. All right, Marie, if you're here, <laughs> put a note in the chat, please, to confirm or deny that. <laughs> and so, you know, now I go back to everyday Lafayette, right? That was it. The woke man, you heard the clang in the morning. And there he was dropping off the milk on your doorstep. Love it. Right? And uh, that was the start of Saturdays. And Saturdays was always work day for us. Okay. And that meant raking. And you were one of nine. One of nine. So there had to be work to spread around if there's nine kids. That's Well, at this, at this time in the 60s, there were only, you know, six of us or seven of us by then. At home. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. My parents vacated Cleveland. And so we came here with five of us and so she had my mom added four more after that but yeah you're right we we're out there raking all these i mean oak trees were everywhere we had to rake them but it was kind of exciting because we got to light them on fire absolutely you know it doesn't take much to entertain a 10 year old <laughs> right and let them burn and you just had to watch over them oh um, that's funny and that and that was no different with the incinerator i mean right. I, so this is obviously a stock photo that you pulled but you claim that there are incinerators <laughs> still <laughs> Lying around. They aren't, yeah. they aren't being used. You should recognize that guy. That's Wally from Be 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 Beaver. Yeah. Right. So where's this? This is That's off the uh, walking trail. They're still around. They're still there. Oh. There weren't garbage men. Yeah. We didn't have the infrastructure, right? We flooded. Suburbia USA was flooded with homes and, and young couples with large families. I mean, look at the Brazonis, us, the Lees, the Johnstons. You can go down the list. Very large families. Tons of garbage. Sure. Every and day, that was it. it went back to into that incinerator oh, and was toasted. Everything. Oh. The only thing that really set me off was my mom's hairspray cans. They exploded. Of course. Yeah. You should have. It was a little exciting. It <laughs> kept you on your toes. All right. So is this a stock photo or is this a family photo? Uh, that's a family photo. I mean, after working all day, we go to the backyard. Hold, hold on one second. It's about to pop up. There's a little delay. You know, that's just a family photo. Um, my brothers and I would go in the backyard. We'd play kickball. You know, the typical, I mean, you're a dapper guy. Look at those outfits, love right? It, love it was it. all blue jeans, flannel shirts, but leather shoes. Everything was kind of Buster Brownish, Okay, you know? Maybe from Sutton's. You couldn't run very fast, you know, I'll tell you that. But, um, and then after that, we'd go up on the street, get our coasters out, because we lived on a hill. Hawthorne Hill was a big hill. Okay. And so that lumber, that pile of lumber I talked about, that was a gold mine. Mm -hmm. We would make coasters out of that. We'd make forts out of that. And we'd watch it, you know, ride them down the hill. Um, you know, we'd have one guy at the bottom of the hill, of course, saying he'd yell car if there was a car coming. It's an important guy to have down the hill. Well, you know those coasters. They're no brakes, really. Absolutely. Not really. I mean, it was your shoes. We, that was about it, right? It was a Flintst primitive Flintstone mobile. So I had a modern... Uh, a modern version from a footwear standpoint, but nothing changed. I lived on the top of Martino. And for anybody wow. who has been That's a big to Martino Road, I could burn through a new pair of Vans um, sitting on my skateboard or riding a go-kart like this down the hill once. And my shoes would get warm. And that was like <laughs> a signal from my parents that I was going just a little too fast. But uh, yeah, I mean, we love those things. We love those things, riding those down that hill. I mean, it was... We put on our plastic football helmets and and go at it, right? We thought that was our safety mechanism. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my brother. We got a modern car. Don't you think that's a little more modern? We put a horn on it. Absolutely. I see, I see the, the safety feature of the horn. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so, so now we're in the water. So are you in the reservoir here? Or are you no, the after all that, you just went out of the creek. All right. The creek was everywhere in Lafayette. Yeah. We navigated the creek. The creek, you know, I know Mary talked about the Indians using creek. Listen. In the 60s, we loved that creek for a different reason. It was a great way to cool off, a great yeah. place to fish. It was a lot so of was water. the water clean? 
ish. I don't know. I didn't check it as a kid, so, but it must have been relatively, I guess. You know. So in, in where where our home is now, um, we're right adjacent to Lafayette Elementary School in downtown Lafayette. Yeah. And so there's a creek across the street from us um, mm-hmm. that runs, and we had some work being done by the city, and there the gentleman who was doing the work. Grew up on First Street, which is now a preschool. He grew up in a little house on First Street, and he said he used to catch salmon in the creek back That's there a true story. Before they yeah. ran up through, I guess there's a culvert in Concord that sort of stops the salmon now. But up until yeah. that was put in, in probably the 70s, yeah. you could catch salmon in Lafayette. That's pretty wild. That's true. And and they still do out at that culvert in Concord. God, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy to think. Yeah, Crazy to think. All right, so uh, we all know what this is. Yeah, so I mean, that was our backyard, our, yeah. not our backyard, but it was Mr. Brazzoni and Mrs. Brazzoni's backyard, really. They owned the hill we lived on, and we would go up there and do everything, right? We played football, mm-hmm. Easter egg hunts, you name it. Everything went on up on that hill. And across the way, of course, is St. Perpetua. Um, we're adjoining hills, and uh, you know what? You know how it is. You go up there. You live on Martino. You go out there with your BB gun. You go catch lizards. You go catch snakes. You bring home whatever you could. Watch mom scream. Take it outside. Let it go again. <laughs> right? I mean, and there's Father John's backyard. He stares straight across at our hill. Yeah, Bri- Brionis was my, I was fortunate to have Brionis as my backyard from age five on. And we would take off and, yeah, go out with our BB guns and our bikes and be gone for the day. That was it. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, there was a pear orchard up there. We picked the pears every year and uh, we actually farmed all the orchards. There were nine kids, right? So we kind of farmed every orchard that it was. All right. So here's here's an older photo. So give us some perspective on what are we looking at and, and from what direction? Well, you know, this one's a tough one to see, but it's the same hill. But downtown Lafayette is on the left, okay. right? Uh, there is uh, Mr. and Mrs. Brazzoni's property on the right, with uh, which looks like you know crops or right, grapes. I, see that. I think it was actually grapes at the time. Um, and this is kind of a '50s photo. It's actually, I think Mary put it up. It's in the library. Um, you'll see a, a giant picture of Lafayette before. This is her before view, sure. and an after, a current view. Um, and when I saw it, I, I thought, wow, what a great location we had on that hill. I mean, I hated going up and down that hill, but it was a great location. I could go to church one way. I could go downtown the other way. And the thing you can't see is the train tracks were our guide. The train, when I came down off that hill, I could turn right and walk to Walnut Creek, mm-hmm. turn left to walk downtown Lafayette, or keep going around the creek and cross the it crossed the creek right at Stanley School. Okay. If you go back there, there's still a bridge there. Right. And it's it's and when you go down, I mean, you can see what it looks like now. When the uh, uh, and these tracks are all now the trail, right? That we it, run yes, and walk on. yes. When I was a kid, it was just dirt. Uh, there were a lot of you know we used to pick up the spikes, and you know this is what it looks like today, of course. Sure. Okay. But we'd pick up the spikes, and those railroad ties were just a gold mine for you know what. Absolutely. 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 So they stacked the railroad ties. The railroad came through, tore up the tracks, stacked all the railroad ties. I think a lot of people used them for steps in their gardens and they just left them out there. And so that this picture here <clears throat> shows those railroad tracks. And so as a kid, you know, on a Saturday when, you know, mom says just be home before dark. Sure. We would just go down there and walk to Walnut Creek if we wanted. Go to the Emporium, Capwells, get some couple candies for a dime and, and walk back. We had nothing else to do. And there were a couple crops along the way, you know, farmers selling their stuff sure. and so on. <clears throat> so it was kind of a standby me moment. All right. So now we're looking at Starbucks. We all know where Starbucks is on the corner in the center of Lafayette. Yeah. These are some quick before and after or way back. It was so, a Lafayette pharmacy when I was a kid. All right. <clears throat> and it was a great place to hang out. <clears throat> My brother and I would grab some bottles, trade them in for, uh, you know, they were a nickel bottle or whatever. I don't know why they were so much, but, um, you know, we go to Lafayette Pharmacy and that's what it looked like. It had a huge soda fountain counter wow. in that front window and we'd order a milkshake and we'd sit there that's amazing. watching the world go by. That's amazing. It was a great location. Great location. 
Um, no offense to Starbucks, but that looks just a little bit. A little, <laughs> that looks a little you know what? Better. Just simpler times, right? Yeah. Just simpler times. And all you had to do was be back before dark. Right. Everything that went on in between <laughs> didn't matter, right? And so we would uh, we'd go down there and cool off during the summer with a nice milkshake. It was either that or my mom would, uh, she'd go to Monty Foods, which is now Trader Joe's, and she would drop us off uh, at the Lafayette Restaurant. And as Mary was saying, you know, the dam was supposed to be a lot higher. And you know that tower is way out of water and you can see the door up there. The water was supposed to go up to that door. And we were always told as a kid, when that dam settled, they stopped, stopped it right there. Right. And that the, what we call the rim trail, was actually supposed to be what is now the walking trail around the reservoir. Got it. So that rim trail was supposed to be the waterline walking trail around the reservoir. So share share with everyone your little antidote that you shared about your mom going grocery shopping, and you guys would do a little. Uh, oh yeah, she would. The fence and well, you know, Monty Foods was where Trader Joe's was, right? right. And yep. the street next to it, I think, is Mountain View Drive. Or, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So if you go when we were kids, and you go, went up to the end of that there was a, you know, it came to a dead end. And that's basically the top of that ridge line you see in that picture was Mountain View Drive. Got it. And so she would say, okay, bring me back dinner, right? And we'd walk down to the reservoir and go fishing all day, right? As long as we were back by dinner, right? Love it. Yeah, yeah. We did get caught a couple times. It's okay. We it it wasn't that. open yet. We, <laughs> we did get caught a couple of times. Uh, Ellen Way, come on, you were a big Ellen Way guy. Of course, yeah. I, uh, I have some old photos. This I'm not in this one, but uh, I certainly remember playing for Bay Alarm. Um, I'm trying to think of other uh, other toy. Maybe the Toy Store might have had a team at one point. Oh yeah, Toyland. I mean, everybody, Gallagher and Bird. You know, the insurance companies. I mean, all of them. But it kept every kid busy doing something. Yeah, you know? for sure. It kept them busy doing something. And you know what was great about it was uh, the coach, or my parents thought it was great, the coaches that volunteered for that, like the Mr. Millettes and them, they were great. They would come by and pick you up. It Those was great. Days, huh? Yeah. All of a sudden, <laughs> nine people gone in an instant. It was just like the coaches would come by, pick you up. Granted, it probably wasn't the safest. You're in the back of a pickup or in a van or something. Right. You know, but they would come pick you up, take you to the game. And then, of course, here's a picture of Cresco. But after the game, the coaches, we'd all meet, win or lose, down at AW. So AW was where Cresco is now, which is east end of Mount Diablo. Yeah. And I'm, so this was post game for you because we, I know we, if we have time, we're going to get the next couple of minutes before we finish to my post game memories. But AW was long gone for me. But that was the post game. Everybody, the nice thing was every team met there. Okay. Every team for a root beer float. I like and this is Starbucks now. Back then, it was Foster Freeze. Mm -hmm. Yep. As you know, um, not that it was any better, but it was actually the advent of kind of fast food. Let's right. face it. It flooded suburbia USA. All right. So and here's here's one. So you claim that the Jack in the Box is still the Jack in the Box. This is the same location. <laughs> same location. I don't know if anyone could dispute uh, Jack that. isn't there. He's not going to speak to you anymore. But I think it was just the advent of walkie talkies, right? Oh, you know funny. anyway so that's yeah jack funny. was a jack was a hit with the kids all right so this is so we know we all know well, let's wait for this to advance here so we all know where the chevron is down by diablo foods back when i was a kid another drive-in drive up was wow. the, drive up was the name and it was called chaps and it was just another uh you know uh kind of i'll call it fast food but you know it, it tasted pretty good as a kid but that, you know, they were all over Lafayette by then. A&W, Foster Freeze, Chaps, you could go down the list, right? Way before McDonald's came in or anybody else. Okay, so that took a second. So there's Chaps. So this was Burgers, drive through Exact same motif, <laughs> right? Exact same motif. Wow. Kind of 50s, mid-modern architecture, right? But I wanted to call out our favorite spot, which was Mr. and Mrs. Lombardo's, the Pioneer Store. And we would go in there. Get so this is Great Wall, of, uh, Great Wall Chinese Restaurant today yeah but yeah. go ahead what so it was a it was a small grocery store mr and mrs lombardo um wow. parishioners and he was a butcher she sat up front go in get a candy bar she take care of you sit down just like your mother love it love it all right and this was my understanding we're, we're running low on time but this was the saturday night or the special that was out. a special occasion 
Okay. First communion. For the start of family. This yeah, was... confirmation. Where where was Sambos? Sambos was uh, right there between Bevmo and the haircut place. Right. Oh, okay. Sambos. But it was, you know, it was an icon lot. Yeah. I mean, and and uh, it was a special occasion restaurant. And you know, we'd go there, and nine of us, you know, the big booths, you know, the big booths. Sure. Yeah. I'm surprised you guys. And where can you get dinner for $1.85 and the next one half price? So when you have 11 people coming in, Ash, yeah. it's the owner's worst nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's going to be a pricey for the mom and dad as well. I get it. Uh, All right. Now, this one, let's let this one advance here. Uh, we're we're going to have to wrap up. We're going to have to wrap up. Here I, hope so that, I thought he said he gave us two hours. Well, yeah, I, we were promised a three-hour segment. Okay, I'll, be, I'll talk fast. That's our, my kindergarten class in Lafayette School, Mrs. Johnson. Well, there may be, I shouldn't say names, huh? There may be Mrs. Johnson's <laughs> relatives here. She was great, though. I loved her very much. Great. Um, and uh, Lafayette School was new at the time, right, of course. And uh, uh, kindergarten. I think, what else do I have here? You know what... Uh, I, th I don't know if it's working or not. Is oh, slideshow working? Sure, sure. So I, oh, I, I this attach... is a good one to end on. We're going to end on this one. I remember okay, hearing about. Let's end on this. I don't know if you can read it. Can you read it? So expand I can it. So can you expand it. I can't zoom in. So for if your screen is small, um, this was uh, somewhat of an informal report card that Chris received in what grade would you say? This is kindergarten. Kindergarten. Okay. So kindergarten. Um, does he show an interest in science? Check. Does he easily at rest check? Is he a good leader? Check. Um, Do I know how to use a handkerchief? He does know how to use a handkerchief. And then most importantly, it says uh, he needs help in jumping rope. That's in the bottom right. So apparently, hold it. How did I fail as a good leader and fail as a follower? Look, I failed as a follower <laughs> and I failed as a good leader. But anyway, yeah, I wasn't very coordinated. I was four years old, okay? Yeah. My mom pushed us into school. We were in diapers, for God's sake. There's, there's only so much you can expect. Yeah. All right, well, thank you, everyone, for uh, indulging us with your time. And we hope you found uh, Chris's stories and the photos that we shared uh, a little bit of a reminder of the old, good old days recently in Lafayette. Uh, we'll turn it over uh, to Father John. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, we really do need another hour. Keep going. <laughs> uh, Chris, where is the picture of you and your brothers and a Saturday night bath, five of the eight of you boys in the bathtub? Uh, well, there's so well you know, my parents I'm were- sorry, uh, I, I need that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here's the other important one. This is um, this is show and tell. It's coming up. Give it one second. Show, you you know you're in a in a farming ranch and community when show and tell. Uh, the guy brings his horse. So that that's a <laughs> photo from Chris's yearbook, and that's a horse in the background that someone brought to show and tell. That didn't happen in the eighties. So I'm alone, just to be clear. No, no, that's the sixties show, right? <laughs> show and tell bringing your horse. And, and it's road apples to class. Oh my. Absolutely. This is so, okay. So you, that, that one menu said $1.85 for a uh, shrimp something or other and half price for the second. So I was so desperate to get out in like public that I went to that uh, Barranca uh, restaurant on, on Diablo, probably very close to where uh, Sambo's was. I think lunch for one was over $60. <laughs> <Yeah>. See, <laughs> Lafayette's changing. Oh my God, I can't tell you how absolutely wonderful this was. So let's look at some of those chat statements. So uh, Rick Cron said, uh, you know, you talked, you showed the garbage disposal and where you burned the garbage. He said, but it was pre-plastic for garbage. <laughs> it's a valid point. Uh, thank you for the walk down memory lane. Great job, guys. Great job. Great fun. Miss good old Lafayette. That's Jennifer. 
<laughs> Amazing presentation. Oh, uh, that's your uh, Elizabeth Stark. I think that's your maybe sister-in-law. Um, what a way to when end the day. Thank you. Great stories. Great fish and chips where pizza pizza uh, Antico is. That and Marie Zeiser says that was not me in the chat. <laughs> in the cheerleader one. Just so let's make that perfectly clear. It was not Marie Zeiser in the cheerleading line. Noted. But, noted. I, I would never. I would never join a cheerleading line that would have me. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Marie, you are the original cheerleader of. <laughs> of student teachers and teachers <laughs> students. Don't say, never, <laughs> don't say you would never join a cheerleading line. <laughs> okay, we, we may need to do a part two uh, on this. Uh -oh. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Thanks, Chris and Ash. Thank this, you for having us, this, our this, pleasure. It was phenomenal. So next week, um, Monica Chapel, who you know, her, if you don't know Monica, you know her column because she has written for a long time a column on wine tasting in the local Lafayette paper. And her family, Scottos, S C O T T O S, has had a, a winery in the, uh, in the, uh, oh my gosh. Livermore Valley area, I bet for almost a century. And she's going to be with us next week to talk about, you know, the joys of, of uh, winemaking and viticulture and, uh, you know, the, well, what we all know and appreciate in the Bay Area. So again, uh, Ash and uh, Ash and Chris, thank you so much for entertaining us and for providing us with such a beautiful sense of the more contemporary history uh, of uh, Lafayette. But as I said last week, you know, the 60s, 70s, and 80s were more than a decade ago, weren't they now? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thanks, everybody. Have a, a a peaceful evening and joyous memories, especially those of you who have a long history in Lafayette. God bless you all. Good night. Good night. Good night.